Oh, man. So, there are times when I see certain things um, out of my element that catch my attention. This is one of those things. Um, I'm a huge fan already of this company. Uh, Not too huge, but huge enough to where I really do appreciate what they have and their selling points as far as their price points go. And as far as, like, you know, whatever you want to call a gimmick goes. Um, certain things like these kind of put a smile on my face. So let's go ahead and get into it, everybody. Let's talk blades, because that's what we're into. Yeah, no ring today. I'm still looking for it. <laughs> I heard a comment in my last video say, bring the ring back. Um, I'm going to. I'm just trying to find it. I don't know where it is. It's missing. Missing in action. So it's going to have to be with that one. I don't know for how long. We'll make it do, right? Now, I do have a, another backup ring, uh, but it's not really good for this channel, I think. Um, I mean, it is, but it's not really the same ring, I guess. it's not. It doesn't really have the same... I don't know how to explain it. It just doesn't. It's not the same <laughs> if I were to switch, basically. Um, but... We'll see what happens. So I might bring the ring back. Uh, hopefully I'll find it soon enough. If I don't, forgive me. But the channel's still going to stay the same even without my mascot. So kind of hang in there. Anyways, today I got for you guys Savivi. Now if you guys are comfortable with Savivi or if you don't know what Savivi is, check them out. Uh, they have some awesome stuff. And for the price point, you can't go wrong. They're good quality, and yeah, I know a lot of people sit there and say, I don't like knives that are from China. Well, this is actually pretty decent. I used to be the same way. I used to think, man, knives from China kind of suck. That's not true now. In this day and age, they've stepped up their game. So Vivi and Wee Knives make some damn good knives for what it is. And coming from a long shot, I used to get, you know, good quality knives, but you don't have to spend too much money to get a good quality knife nowadays. Go ahead and check them out. They got all kinds of stuff for everybody. This is kind of one of those things that kind of... It, it's in the realm of... Uh, very bare bones, decent... This is a good thing to give somebody as a gift if you know that they're not exactly 100% a knife person but they do appreciate a good looking knife or if they're just kind of that... Uh, I don't want to say old world but classic kind of knife collector. This is for that type of person. Somebody who's like, I don't want the big, scary-looking knives. I just like the traditional kind of stuff. Well, this is perfect for that. So today I'm featuring the Rustic Gent. And this one is their more expensive uh, Rustic Gents. Some of their other more uh, affordable Rustic Gents are not like this. So this one's kind of just the higher up and uh, what really caught my eye. I really, really like it. So... You're looking at the G10 handle with the carbon fiber bolster, gray stainless steel liner, and Damascus blade. Now I'm reading that whole entire thing because that seems like a lot of information to be very specific because they have different types. They've also got the non-Damascus that's actually a little bit cheaper. Uh, this ended up, I think it was just, just shy of a little over a hundred bucks. So if, if it breaks the hundred dollar mark, I'm sorry. But you guys can get the cheaper ones. Uh, I was thinking about getting a cheaper one, but I wanted to go all out with this one because of how pretty it is. And I found a use for my lanyard because I ended up getting a free lanyard from Civivi. And it just sat in my box. As you guys know, I'm not a huge lanyard guy. But I actually found this to be useful, and I'll give you a couple reasons why. So, anyways, we'll get this out of the way. Uh, when you open up the box, you're going to see your Wii stickers. Upside down, sorry. You got your typical dragon and bird, uh, and when I say bird, I don't know if it's an owl, eagle, or hawk, <laughs> but it just looks badass. So, here we go. Awesome stuff. As per their, you know, selling point is you get the whole shebang. So, you also get your microfiber cloth. All right. You get your instruction manual and uh, warranty information, so there's that. And you get your... Uh, now, when you get this... Um, I know the, the knife isn't here. It's actually right down here where you can't see it. But I'm trying to get to you guys knowing what you get in this box. So it comes out with a sliding box like this. Uh, and you get your tactical silica, if that means anything to you. 
And it comes in this bag. The knife itself comes in this bag separate from the leather sleeve that you get with the pocket clip on the leather sleeve, which I think is a fantastic modern twist to a more traditional design, which another reason why it caught my attention. And this is obviously just an extra bag. Um, now, what's funny about this is that this bag uh, had the lanyard in it. It's like this pre-knotted lanyard. Now, you'll see it. And it's uh, the bead. It's got this uh, brass bead. <laughs> and it's kind of heavy. It's got a little bit of weight to it. It's packaged separately within the bag. So you actually have to put those two together. I thought that was interesting. I don't know why they did that. I think that's because they wanted to keep the, uh, the finish on the bead fresh. I don't know. But that's what you get inside the box. Now, what you get as far as the knife goes, I'm going to go ahead and bring it into frame. Get that garbage out of the side. Out of the side. <laughs> out of the frame. Now, here it is. Now, if you guys understand that I'm not a lanyard person, why in the freaking hell did I put a lanyard on this? Two reasons. One... I noticed that when I put this knife in its sleeve, it's pretty difficult to get, even at a pinch grip. It's just difficult. Is that a bad thing? No. It's retaining the knife and it's doing what it's supposed to do. I get that. But my thing is, if I need to get to my knife, I want to be able to do it one-handed, not two. What I mean by two-handed is you have to take this out, you have to pinch it together like this in order to open it up, then you take your knife out, then you're able to use it, but this is a two-handed knife anyway. So this just makes it a little bit easier to grab. Um, having a lanyard on there seems appropriate for this kind of knife. If you're capable to do it, it is a pain in the ass to get a lanyard on this knife, or on any Civivis from what I heard. This is the only time I've ever actually put a lanyard on a Civivi, <laughs> and it was a difficult task. It took me more than 10 minutes to do, and it shouldn't ever, ever take somebody more than a few seconds to put a lanyard on a normal knife with a normal lanyard hole, but I'm not a lanyard guy, so... <laughs> Uh, not saying that I'm not experienced in it. I used to put lanyards on my older knives, but I just found it kind of pointless. Not to mention people would grab at my lanyard, making me not want to put lanyards on my knives anymore. So that's just something that you need to keep in mind. When you put a lanyard on the knife, you got to have some drawbacks and knowable, understandable drawbacks when you do this sort of thing. So just keep an open mind to that. Um, but yeah, so here it is. Yes, this is a real leather now, that's one thing I really like. It's not the best quality leather, but it, it works very well for this knife. Um, now, what drew my attention to it was the fact that it has a pocket clip. And this pocket clip is anchored into the material so that way you cannot remove it. And that is good, considering that if you're going to carry this knife on a regular basis, it's going to wear and tear a little bit. And that's going to do that regardless because of the material. So, you know... Just throwing that out there but what's great about this is that they put it in a real leather case that's fantastic not pleather not plastic not some sort of synthetic no this is real leather it's not the best quality leather but it's actual leather and that is fantastic i I can feel it. It feels like genuine leather. It looks like genuine. It is. It's genuine leather. Now, as far as wear and tear goes, I guess the mileage is going to vary, you know, because of the person, depending on whether or not you're going to carry this on a regular basis or if you're going to do it just once in a while or on special occasions, whatever. But this is a fantastic thing to have for this kind of knife. So I'm going to put that off to the side now that I've talked about that. Now, here's the knife. Okay, so here it is. You got that G10 on this side. You got the carbon fiber bolsters at the top of the blade, or <laughs> of the knife, the blade. Oh well, yeah, I mean, it's a blade, right? Uh, here's that uh, bead that I was t telling you about. So you got the Civivi on there. It's, I think it's proper because of the size of the knife. To me, having a lanyard on there just seems fitting, especially when you're trying to get it in and out of that sleeve at least one-handed. This provides a little bit extra to grab onto to pull it out of the pocket not to mention it actually does look pretty nice on this knife 
of course, it would probably do a little bit better if if, if the bead was silver, right, instead of bronze. But you know what? That's okay. That makes it stand out a little bit, give it a little bit of character, what have you. Um, so yeah, it is a two-hand two hand opening knife, and I say that because it is reminiscent to it. It doesn't have any thumb studs, no flipper. It doesn't have uh, any type of wave feature. The only way to open this is with this fuller-like nail mick, is I guess is what I'm going to call it. Um, you just practically open it up two-handed. All right? It works. It's very simple. Like I said, this is a great thing to get somebody if you know you're trying to get them a knife and they're like, eh, I'm not too huge on the modern knives. They're not very traditional feeling. Blah, blah. This is a traditional feeling knife to me. It is a very traditional feeling knife. And it opens and locks very securely. There's no blade play. I've tested it out. It's actually very, very great. I enjoy this knife very much for what it is. Is this something I'm going to carry as an EDC? Maybe when I'm older and I don't really need kind of the big, scarier knives anymore. This would be the kind of knife I'd picture myself carrying, um, you know, when I when I don't feel I need those big, scary knives anymore. I can just use something that's very practical, and this is it. Uh, it comes in the T8 hardware, so T8s, your Torx, all right, it works. I don't know what the metal composition is for the Damascus steel, but it is a raindrop Damascus, so that's very pretty. I really do enjoy raindrop Damascus. It really gives it that pop. It looks very, very nice. And that fuller nail nick is really, really cool. So everything is very nice. I mean, you can't expect anything too much more from Civivi. They, their tolerances on their knives, I've noticed, are fantastic. Every knife that I get from them is superbly done. I want to say close to perfection every single time I open it, lock it. If I've seen previous videos of it, it feels like I've gotten that same exact knife, even though they're separate from each other because, you know, they're not the same ones, but they come from the same factory. And knowing that and seeing that quality is, I have to say it, this is pretty sad to say, it's actually way better than what Benchmade has been recently coming out with. And Benchmade's tolerances have, over the years, have kind of declined. And one of the reasons why I don't like Benchmade too much now is because it seems like their stuff isn't consistent like it used to be. And if you're going to be paying big dollars on something, you want to make sure that their tolerances are damn near perfect. Civivi, they're the cheaper version of Wii knives, and they're the same company, and their tolerances are damn near perfect. That's saying a lot. That's pretty bad. <laughs> You're getting beat by an offshore company that's that's nowhere near, you know, the uh, the reputation of, of big, big name companies like Benchmade. There's a problem there. You know, and I'm not saying that I want Benchmade to hear this or anything like that, but I'm just trying to prove a point that for the money that you're paying for Civivi, you don't need to waste too much money on a more expensive knife. Just give these guys a try. They're, they come out with great stuff. They really do. So, anyways, back to... I don't know, I'm ranting on about that. Um, this is a fantastic knife for just the minimalist kind of person who's not into the more current, kind of tactical kind of knives. This is a very unique... I almost want to say flashy, but it's not flashy. I mean, it is now, but it's nice, and it has a lot of practical use to it. And, uh, you know, the older, more classic uh, gentleman carry type people, this is good for that. This is good for that type of person. So if you're looking for a gift for somebody who's into that sort of thing, get them one of these. They're, they're fantastic. They don't really break the bank, at least not too much, unless you're really going for the more expensive kind. Go on Blade HQ, they got them still in stock as far as I'm concerned. Um, they're just great. And as for an EDC type thing, if you're into something simple like this, this will go good for that. So I'm going to go ahead and get into the specs of this knife so that way you guys know what you're getting yourself into. So the lanyard obviously was separate. I did not get the lanyard with this knife. I got it 
probably in the very beginning when I was collecting uh, some of Savini's stuff, I got, it was a free thing, it was like free lanyard, yeah, it was a free lanyard with purchase of one of their own Civivis. I can't remember what it was, but it was through Blade HQ, and I got this lanyard first before I got the knife, which I thought was weird, but this was a free lanyard, so if you can throw a lanyard on this particular knife, it would work. Uh, just to let you know, though, I had to put a string, a smaller string through this, and then I had to loop it in, get a pair of tweezers, and then go to the other side and pull it through just to yank it through and it actually took it was a long long tedious process of getting this lanyard it was a pain in the butt but it's secure so that's a good thing it's just going to be a pain in the butt um but you know what if you're a lanyard guy this will help um i'm not a lanyard guy but i think this is fitting for this knife so it'll work uh it actually makes it look just a little bit more attractive in my opinion but that's just because of the knife itself. Uh, normal knives, I don't think it's necessary. But with this particular knife, you know, whatever. So with the lanyard, it looks like it comes in at a whopping 3.11 ounces. Without the lanyard, you're looking at a 2.87. So, you know, it's, it's fairly light. And I'm going to go ahead and add it with the sheath, just in case you guys are wondering about that. You're looking at a total of 3.85, so literally under 4 ounces, even with the lanyard on there. 3.63 without the lanyard, okay? And that's just the whole package by itself. So, it's, it's lightweight, guys. It's lightweight. You don't need to put it on a belt. You can literally slip it in your pocket with this. And it's a deep carry, so you're not going to see anything other than the lanyard, maybe, if you have one on there to use. <laughs> Good stuff. All right. So it actually does make it a lot easier because I always catch myself doing this, and then I pull it out. So this is this lanyard does work very well for this, this knife. All right. So... We'll go ahead and do the measurements on it. You're looking at a three inch blade. So a lot of places, I think this is a good thing to carry. Unless it's under three inches, then maybe this isn't, but <laughs> you know. Uh, almost four inches. You're looking at three and seven eighths, a handle, but you know, whatever. <laughs> I'm gonna do something real quick, hold on. So almost four and a half inches just with this size alone in your pocket unless you want to just drop that in the pocket by itself without the you know leather sleeve then you know by all means do as you want all right so on the blade you are looking at a 2.2 millimeters 2.1 2.2 all right 2.2 and you're looking at 11.2 on the handle fantastic knife uh slim gentleman's carry it is called the rustic gent for a reason uh one thing that i really like about this knife is that it has a half stop so right there that gives you time to obviously that gives you the opportunity to move and switch your grip so that way you can finish the closing of the knife without having to harm yourself um this is a nice knife for what it is civivi kind of hit a home run with this thing um and I'm not that type of guy to go for knives like this. I go for the tactical stuff. You know, I go for the stuff that kind of seems a little bit more EDC friendly to my expectations. But when I saw this, I couldn't help but to grit my teeth. And I was like, you know what? I kind of do want one. I'm curious about it. I watched a few videos on it just to see if I wanted to make a decision. And I thought to myself, you know what? This does look like something that I would appreciate, you know. And if I don't want to carry the big scary knives, I can transition to something like this for special occasions, if any. And that just makes it, you know, a little bit nicer. And on top of that, having that cool looking blade with that Damascus steel, it's, you know, makes it pretty. It's like having a house with that fancy furniture that you know you're never, probably not going to sit on, but you know you want to. It's just like that. Of course, um, you know, that sounds ridiculous, but my analogies, shut up. Anyways, um... Like I said, the lanyard thing kind of bothers me a little only because I'm not a lanyard guy, but for this type of knife, it seems fitting, and it does very well. It sits pretty deep in there, so 
when I was trying to do it without the lanyard, getting in there, I had to move the flaps up a little bit, and I was pinching, you know, without actually trying to pull this back. I was just holding it in place while I was pinching this to see how well, you know. After a while, after you work it in, I'm sure it's going to slip in and out of this thing with no problem. But having that lanyard on there does add a little bit of uh, more to grab so you can, you know, do that bit and then pull it out and it's there. So, and it's a lot harder to lose because now you got that extra piece on there that makes it a little bit easier to spot because it gives it, it adds the length, you know. <laughs> So yeah, if you're interested in something like this, and uh, if you're looking for a gift for somebody, I think this would be a good gift to give to somebody who's not really a knife person, but does appreciate a knife that has its simplicity to it. Um, it does kind of remind me of a shrunken down... Uh... <laughs> Damn it. A buck 110. Uh, it does kind of remind me of that. I really do like the buck... Uh, series knives so if you like that kind of knife just imagine it shrunken down and looking just a little bit more flashier and that's what you get um yeah yeah <laughs> anyways let's go ahead and slash that like button stab that subscribe slice that bell icon so you guys are notified anytime that i post new stuff and in these crazy times everybody please be kind be safe carry responsibly and i'll see you all awesome people in the next video